welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shirts, where today we're looking at this lovely and large specimen here. Not bad, right? Pretty big. It's about four feet tall, so it's at the maximum limit for bringing a specimen into the lab, and it's dark out, so sure as heck I aren't going to do anything else with it. But anyway, its scientific name is Hibiscus mutabilis, or commonly known as Cotton Rose, and that's fitting because if you look at this old leaf, one of the older leaves on the plant, that's almost the same shape as common cotton leaves. In fact, since it's in the Malvaceae family, it's actually related to cotton and okra and Rose of Sharon, that shrub that people use with the pretty lavender flowers, and Roselle. There are a lot of hibiscus in the plant trade, a lot. But anyway, the term mutabilis means changeable or variable, and that is a direct reference to what its flowers do. We'll get into that in a moment. But this plant was originally native to southern China and Taiwan, and through the plant trade it is distributed far and wide as a result. And, I mean, look at it. Can you blame them? I can't. In USDA zones 9 through 10, it's considered a shrubby perennial, hardy perennial. And then that means the top growth here stays put and it stays green, in theory. In zones 8 through 7, and we're in 8A, it's a herbaceous perennial, which means all of this go, dies off and it goes dies back down to the ground and re, produces new shoots from the rootstock. In zone 6 through 1, it is considered a flat annual because it's just too cold unless you bring it in in a pot. Its soil pH preference is 5.0 to 5.7, and it prefers a loamy, well-drained soil that, while lo being loamy and well-drained, should be kind of moist but not wet. So it will not tolerate literally being in a swamp. Exposure is full sun. Its height can be 6 to 15 feet tall, which this one's 4 feet tall in one growing season, so that's believable. Its width can be 6 to 10 feet wide, which is also believable, and there is a living specimen of this here in Fayetteville at the Cape Fear Botanical Garden over by the old farmhouse that's near uh, one of the wrought iron entry gates. I don't know if they still use it for that, but it is literally a hedge. Like, show enough hedge. So, yes, this plant can pull that off. This plant is really great for hiding something during the time of the year that you're most likely to be out in the yard and see it. You want to hide an ugly shed, a water pump, a busted well, a dead car, um, the neighbors. You don't want to see the neighbors' weird-looking children. You don't want to see the neighbors, You want, but you want to put something pretty that they can look at it and you can look at it and you'll be like, ah, oh, and then fall comes and you'll be like, oh, no, I can see my neighbors. This is your plan. Also, not invasive. Win-win. Consequently, you can hide the dead bodies with this plant. Uh, LitFM does not advise you hide dead bodies with this plant. Oh, that was our lawyer. Anyway, it's also known as Confederate Rose, Dixie Rose Mallow, and Cotton Rose Mallow. See what I mean about the obsession with the rose and the mallow word, and then not connecting? The folks who common name these were not very inventive. Enough said. Now, it is a preferred nectar pollen plant for a Pythiolothrix bombiformis, or the hibiscus bee. Now, I do not know if that particular specimen particularly goes for this plant, but, or if that group, the hibiscus bees, it's part of a grouping, a family, they all just specialize in hibisci as a whole. I'm assuming specialization as a whole. Now, about those flowers. I mentioned they were special enough to get a specific epithet, right? Well, here's why. The flowers darken after they open over the course of the day that they are open. And they're not open the whole day. They're present the whole day. In my observations in the garden, and I've been up early enough to see the flowers fully open in the morning, and that's about like 5 or 6 in the morning, these uh, flowers open, the flowers open, and then they're faded and spent by like, uh, I want to say, mid-noon, if even that long. And they're beautiful, don't get me wrong. This specimen blooms white with a red center and a red pistil and stamen. It's very pretty. But then by the time they're faded, they're almost a pinkish color. And that's because certain coloring agents in the actual petals of flowers leak out over the course of the day, changing its hue. And I suspect that is an evolutionary trait to attract different pollinators. It may have relied on more than one species of pollinator. I'm not entirely sure that's just a theory on my part. But it is cool to watch. Now, uh, about those, additionally about those flowers, the flowers and the leaves are an herbal medicine. However, 
I would advise you speak to a professional before you use a plant like this to treat your major ailments. Like if you have cancer, I'm pretty sure sticking hibiscus blossoms in your tea is not going to necessarily help you. It may make you feel better, but that may be about it. Speak to a medical professional or a certified practitioner of herbal medicine who is accredited before you start trying to self-treat yourself because you never know what the side effects are. You may turn out to be the one in a billion who's allergic to hibiscus blossoms or something. And we can't have y'all swelling up due to anaphylactic shock. We just can't have that. So, there's just one other fact you ought to know about the cotton rose, and that is that the fiber from the bark can be used to make rope. Apparently there are long fibers in the stems, and if you crush the stems, you can extract them and make rope out of it. Now, how does that compare up to jute twine? I don't know. How does it compare up to hemp twine? Still don't know. But it's an interesting thing to think about, because for the purposes of a survival plant, you, you can eat the leaves, I believe you can eat the leaves, I know you can eat the flower petals at least, I'm pretty sure you can eat the flower, the seed pods. You can probably eat some of the root, though it's probably tough and gross. And so now you can make fiber out of the stems. So there's that. And these stems also make for a great cat toy. So there's another use right there. Now, why should you have this in your garden? Because it's a great, tall, bushy plant with pretty flowers for the morning that isn't excessive. It doesn't produce litter. It doesn't produce waste fruit. It's going to attract solitary bees more than it will something like wasps, so there's that too. Additionally, at four feet tall, I'm pretty sure that it may or may not attract hummingbirds. So a batch of these blooming red would probably be really good for that. But additionally, the biodiversity of having one in your yard and the bragging rights of the garden club are totally worth it. I mean, this one was rescued from my crescent bed, which is a bit overgrown at the moment, because it was one of the ones that is still doing well despite being overgrown a bit. And so it's worth rescuing and it's worth noting. This will be going in the ground later, this plant, because as you can see, and I'm going to just scroll, it's in that pot, which is about mm, maybe two to three gallons, and it dries out every day and threatens to topple because of, well, metacentric height. So that's about all I have for you on hibiscus mutabilis or cotton rose. If you have any thoughts about this plant, please uh, leave them in the comments section if you've grown it or have a different color or have any tips or tricks. We'd love to hear it. If you have any ideas on future plant shows, we'd love to hear that too. Additionally, if you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And at the end of the video description, you will find a link to our Forge blog where you can find all kinds of groovy forage topics and what plants you can use for what. With that said, folks, as always, keep them growing, and thank you for watching.